grade 8 math number 15.1a. We're now in chapter 15 and we're going to be talking about two-way frequency tables. I'm going to be making a two-way frequency table. We can construct and interpret a two-way frequency table by making a table that has columns up and down. These are each columns that represent one set of categories for a population or group and rows. These are rows coming across that represent a different set of categories for that same population. So there's a population and there's a subpopulation, okay? That means it's a population inside of the bigger one. So a population could be like all the dogs in the country or the world. And a subpopulation would be Dalmatians. That's a type of a dog. And that could be a whole population of a type of dogs, see? Another one could be Beagles or German Shepherds or Poodles or Weimariners or whatever, those would all be subpopulations of dogs, see? Now, to remember the columns and rows, because a lot of people get this mixed up, just remember that columns hold up buildings like a city hall or a government building. You'll see those big, huge columns, you know? Remember how you've seen big columns like at the Capitol that hold up the building? Well, that's easy to remember what a column is. And a row, that's like a seat in a theater. Which row do you want to sit in? Do you want to sit in the front row? Do you want to sit in the back row? So that's a row and that's a column, okay? So we can compare the relative frequency of one event in a subpopulation to the frequency in the entire population. So what that's saying is we can compare the relationship of how often something happens in one population, like dogs, compared to the subpopulation, just Dalmatians, okay? And we can find out if there's an association between the categories. We can see if there's a connection between those groups. So I got this information on the internet. Many Dalmatians are deaf, and it's because there's genetically a gene that causes the deafness, and because so many of the Dalmatians were bred together, they each carried the gene. So out of a hundred total, 23 dogs, Dalmatians, are deaf and 77 would not be. See? That would be out of a hundred Dalmatians. And not Dalmatians, any other breed of dog, not counting Dalmatians, only four out of a hundred would be deaf. So you can see from this that Dalmatians, there's a lot of Dalmatians that suffer from deafness compared to another breed of dog. See that? So that's basically what we're doing. We're comparing a population to a subpopulation like dogs to Dalmatians and whether something is happening or something is not happening and then we're looking at the totals, okay? So a frequency is how many times an event occurs, how many times it happens. And a two-way table shows the frequencies of the data that is categorized in two ways. So the rows show one categorization and the columns show another. So what we're going to do is voting versus not voting and having a car versus not having a car. And we're going to see, is there an association between having a car and voting in an election? So the first thing we do is we've got our table and we'll start with a blank table. Okay. And we put car, no car and the total and voted and didn't vote and the total. We start at the bottom right corner and fill in how many were surveyed or polled. So 100 people were asked, did you vote? Did you have a car? Did you not have a car? So there were 100 people that were asked, okay? Then we fill in the right column for how many have a car and how many don't. So how many had a car? The answer was 60 and 100 take away 60 is 40. So we know that the no car had to be 40 if the yes cars were 60, because we took it from the 100, see? Now the next thing we do is fill in the top row of how many voted and how many had cars. So we know that the ones with cars that voted were 50. Well, if the total was 60, we know that the ones that didn't vote had to be 10, see? Because 60 take away 50 is 10. Then we fill in the second row for how many don't have a car and voted, and then how many didn't vote. So we know the total is 40, and when we find out from our data, from our information, that 
the answer is 20 from not having a car but having voted, then we know that the balance must be 20 because 20 plus 20 is 40. So that had to be 20, see? Then what we do is we fill in this bottom row of totals, okay? And 50 plus 20 is 70, and 10 plus 20 is 30, and we already had this one filled in. And we make sure that the last number in each row or column is the sum of the numbers in that row or column. So we make sure our math is correct. So we've got 50 plus 10 is 60, 20 plus 20 is 40, 70 plus 30 is 100, and then we go down this way. 50 plus 20 is 70, 10 plus 20 is 30, 60 plus 40 is 100. Make sure all of our numbers are correct. Now we can look at this and try to interpret the information. So the relative frequency of having voted is 70%. See that? Because the total is 100, 70 divided by 100 is 0 0.70. See how I did that? I didn't divide 100 by 70, I did 70 divided by 100. See that? And 0 0.70 is 70 one hundredths or 70%. See that? So the relative frequency of having voted is 70%. The relative frequency of voters with cars is 83%. Now, how did I get 83? There's no 83 on here. Well, look, cars is 50 that voted out of a total of 60, and that's 50 out of 60. 50 voted that had cars out of a total of 60 that had cars. Then I do the 50 divided by 60. See that? And that equals 0.83 or 83 one hundredths or 83%. See? And then no car is 20 out of 40. See that? No car that voted or no car that didn't vote is 20 out of 40. So 20 out of 40 is 20 divided by 40, and that's 50%. It's 0 0.50. See? So that's making a two-way frequency table. That's what it is. That's how we fill it out, all right? Next video, we're going to talk about relative frequency and if there's an association between our values, okay? I'll see you next video. Keep trying. Bye.